popular sequence, um, for example, can be represented by the numbers uh, 2, uh, 4, 8, 16, and we can continue on. If you see the pattern, uh, you can tell the algorithmic function, which allows these numbers to keep increasing in this sequence. But exactly what is a series? Well, a series is simply the sum of the numbers in a sequence. So if I were just simply to place a addition sign between the numbers of this sequence, then we have formed a series. So the first thing you will learn is that the sum of the terms of the sequence is called a series. All right, so very simple to remember. Sequence, just a set of numbers, series is when you find the sum or you begin adding them. Now you guys remember from unit one, the notation for um, the sum or the summation of looks like this. Some people may write a fancier summation sign, right? So let's just consider this series, for example. All right, so looking at this example here, Let's consider this series here, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus. Going on and on and on means it must be continuing on till infinity. Right, so remember that um, when you're dealing with sequences, you have that uh, u to the n, and it represents your sequence. So looking at this series, our first term, right, so n, when n is 1, just observing this, when we have n being equal to 1, you're going to get u subscript 1 is 2, and that's our first term. Also, when n has a value of uh, 2, that means our second term is four. And the list will go on and on and on till we reach all the values that we have here, right? So U4 is 16 and so on and so on. Now, just as you would do with sequences when you're looking at a series, because it's simply a sum, you, you can identify the pattern that allows for this to keep on increasing. For example, 2 could be rewritten as 2 to the power of 1, 4 could be written as 2 squared, 8 as 2 cubed, 16 as 2 to the power of 4, and so on till we reach the nth term of our uh, sequence, our series, sorry. <laughs> now, uh, because we have identified a pattern, you can see here, this would simply imply that our sequence in particular has a relationship where when n has a value of 1, the power at the top increases and the base 2 always remains the same. So this seems like it has a pattern of 2 to the power of n, right? So what you have done here essentially is simply found a algorithmic function that represents this uh, sequence, right? Because these values are values that belong to the sequence. Now, how do we begin to relate the series to the sequence? Well, simple. We have found, right? We have found that our sequence has a function such that when n has a value of one, it's the first and the second and the third and so forth terms are simply two raised to the relative uh, powers, right? 
that's what we got for the basic function of this sequence because u sub n is a sequence. Now, if somebody asks you, well, yeah, that's a sequence, but what's the sum of all the values in that sequence? Uh, that's where series will come into play because the sum of a sequence is denoted by the summation sign and the sum of a sequence is a series. So you would go on to write the sum of this sequence u to the sub n will be simply given by using our nice summation symbol, right? The summation of u to the n as, let's just say n has a value going from one all the way up till infinity, right? It'll be given by this notation here, right? So this is the sum of our sequence going from one to infinity has a value of, well, it seems like this sequence, the values in the series, sorry, keep increasing on and on and on and on. So I'm guessing that this sequence, um, the series, <laughs> it's easy to confuse it. Uh, the series that seems to be diverging. The sum seems to go to infinity. If I were to add up all of these values, in this case, it seems like it would go to infinity. Hence, um, I would say, this is a divergent, right? This is a divergent um, series or a divergent sequence, right? So that's the difference between uh, series and sequences. A sequence is just the set of numbers that belong to a series, whereas a series is the actual sum of those numbers. So that's the essential difference there, right? So you guys can take that note. And we're going to actually get into a bit of some standard sum of series that you guys should have recalled from unit one. Um, so recall, right, recall. Um, you guys had some basic sums to recall um, in lower six. And they go as follows, standard recalls the first one. If you are finding the sum of a function just in R going from 1 to N, say, um, then it's given by N, N plus 1, all over 2. Um, second one, if you're going from R being equal to a 1 to the value of N, then uh, that's given by n, n plus 1 uh, by 2n plus 1 all over 6. And then finally, I remember the third one, um, r equals 1 going to n when you have, this one is for r squared, my bad. <laughs> and for the r cubed one, it's supposed to be n squared by n plus 1 squared all over 4. And I seem to have made a miss in writing something up here. This is supposed to be R. I picked up on it when I was writing out all of these here, right? All right. So please recall these three basic um, summation rules for functions in the form of R, R squared, and R cubed. They do come in pretty handy as well as the basic summation rules, such as if you are finding, um, for example, if you're trying to find uh, the sum of something such as uh, you have six, and say this is your basic uh, sequence here, this could be written as six, the sum of your sequence, right? So recall these basic summation rules. Um, if you can't remember all of them, you would probably need to just do a quick recap on your own. Okay, so let's see how um, we can apply perhaps one or two of these. I'll do um, one, easy one to begin with. All right, so um, let's consider the most basic one. Uh, actually, let's, let's probably do a more difficult one, okay? 
So we'll probably try to attempt two in one. So this is our example here. Um, let's just say we want to find the sum of our r, r plus 2, um, going from r is equal to 1 to 40. Um, and we have to do some expansion here. You can rewrite this as a summation of r squared plus 2r from r going to 1 to 40. And of course, you see that form there. So you can simply, before you start to substitute your standard forms, what you can do is um, you can use your summation rules and you can separate these out um, into this. Right, recall you can simply have your R squared here and you take that constant out in front, <laughs> kind of like integration. And ah, yeah, you just go ahead and you use your rules and you break this up into a nicer form. And in this form, you would be able to identify that we have R squared here, and that's the same as, oh, I think I'll just write the answer straight off the bat. All right, so this one would break up into, let me just scroll a little bit up here so you can see it, right? R squared breaks up into this form here, and we have in this question N being equal to 40, so right off the bat, we're going to substitute that value for n being 40 into n plus 1 will be 40 plus 1, that's 41. And 2n plus 1, that's 2 by 40, 80, 81. And for r squared, it's over 6. Then plus 2, and then we have to substitute when we see a function in terms of r um, recall when we have a function in terms of r, it's given by just n. Let me just scroll up so you can see it. Okay, right over here. This one over here. So we're looking at this one and we just did this one, okay? So again, when n is 40, we would have 2 by 40, 41 all over 2. And of course, these twos will simply cancel. So at the end of the day, when you work out uh, these questions, um, you should get a value of around 23,780 if you use your calculator correctly, not making any errors. And um, that one was quite nice and simple. So this is uh, how to apply some of these rules if you see some of your sequences being in the standard forms r, r squared, r cubed. If you see your basic summation rules such as 2r, um, recall to separate that constant, place it in front. You know, you want to try to simplify your terms as much as possible. Bring them to formats that you can recognize so you can actually just substitute directly into those um, respective forms. All right, so. All of these questions we've been doing so far are when R started from a value of 1 to 40. Now, what happens if we don't want to find the sum of the first 40 terms in a particular series? What if, um, next example, what if this time we want to find the sum of a particular sequence, R, and um, we want to find the sum of those values from when R is 11, only up till 25, so just a, a section, right? If you want a visual, I can give you guys a visual to understand what this means if you never did. Um, let's just say we have numbers um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, going all the way up till the 10th number, and then uh, numbers 1 through 10 inclusive will be the first 10 digits, right? And then the 11th number would be when R is 11. That'll be the 11th uh, term in our sequence. So what essentially you want to find is the sum of the terms that start from the 11th term going all the way up to the 25th term. They want to know what is the sum of these numbers here, the sum of piece of the sequence. So when you want to find like the sum of a part of a sequence, Essentially, what you can do is a subtraction. You can find the sum of the entire sequence from when 
uh, originally R would have started with the first term and going all the way down to your last term in your series or whatever is the last value they would have given you here, right? And then that would account for the sum of all, all of these values in this particular sequence, right? If you were to add them, all right? And now to get the remnant, this portion, you just need to subtract. You would need to subtract out from the total, you would need to subtract this. So you would need to deduct from R going from one all the way down till 10. Right, so essentially what you subtract is the value of R just before the starting that the question gave. Right, so a lot of times students tend to get confused and lost and they break it up from R going from 1 to 25 and then 10 to 25 and they can't understand. So this is a visual. It's just like you're finding the sum from all the way from 1 till 25, from the beginning till the end, and then you're simply subtracting from the beginning to the term that is not involved in the question. So you get your remnants of your answer. And then straight off the bat, um, you start substituting once you have your um, summation sign set up starting from R going from one in both cases. You can just go ahead, use your basic rules. Um, we're going back to when you have this form N, N plus one over two, because it's the standard form of the R function, right? So this one will apply, applying this, Right, so we are actually applying this. Applying this, we will get, right? So we have when n is 25, you would just get 25 by 26 over two. Subtract, when n is 10, you'll get 10 by 11 all over two, right? And uh, that value just would so to eventually be equal to, um, I believe it was 270. So your final answer was just simply equal to 270. Of course, you would write this statement as your last line, right? Any errors between here to here means you have to go back and revise um, your use of your calculator where you're inputting brackets. Some calculators need that ABC tab to be used properly. Some calculators may need to use additional brackets here. Um, just be careful when you're typing in numbers, okay? All right, so, um, so far we have been dealing with defining the sum of a series involving dead shot numbers all the way. Values from 1 to 10, 1 to 40, 11 to 25, finding the sum of parts of a series. Next, what we are going to do is actually, what if I have space here? <laughs> I think this is my last bit of space and I need, need a good bit. So I think we're going to have to clear off each here. Okay, and we'll start from the top. Okay, so I'll just clear canvas and start back from my top. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, and this bit is the catchy bit that students tend to have issues with. So I'll try my best to move as slowly as possible, finding the sum of a series in terms of n. Yeah, so when things become arbitrary, you have algebra, pure algebra involved, you know, that's when students um, don't like the, they don't like the abstract nature of anything. You know, they always like to work with numbers. This is where your basic understanding comes into play. Do you really understand its application um, based on if it were a banana or a Crick's biscuit or, you know, it doesn't matter what you're substituting. Do you understand how to apply your knowledge regardless of if it's a number or a letter or uh, something, right, in real life? So here's the case we're going to have here. Um, how do you find the sum of something going from, our starting from one, but the last term we're inputting here is n. 
into a function that looks like this. Now, guess what? It's the same thing. It's the very same thing. It's just your answer will be in terms of n. So you would go ahead and apply your rules. You would separate this out nicely into, it starts from one, so you don't have to find any difference and you separate it out using your basic rules that you recall for series. All right. And then here you have a, um, remember when you're finding, um, this is a special case, when you're finding the sum, when you're finding the sum of a series and it has a constant value like that, the answer is just equal to the constant value multiply by how many terms you have, right? So standard recall and um, just a simple application here, right? So this one will be applied when, if you can recall as well, we just did it. This is n, n plus one all over two. So over here, usually if they had 20, you would substitute and being 20 into your formula over here and over here. But this time, the final value that you're substituting is n. So your actual formula just ends up here. This is your standard formula. And of course, when you're finding the sum of a um, constant, it's just four multiplied by your um, biggest, last, biggest value you're trying to find the sum of, right? So from here, it's just a basic uh, simplification. If you want, you can find n squared plus one plus n all over two, and you can find the LCM, or you can get into the LCM right away. Um, it doesn't matter, but the I'll just leave you with the answer that um, we worked towards here, right? So as simple as you can go, try your best, and um, just get some nice clean answers there, right? No rocket science here. Um, very nice and simple. Uh, I can do a bit more challenging one, right? Not so challenging, actually. <laughs> All right. Um, what if we have a uh, next example there? And they ask us to find uh, the sum of r goes to 1 to n of r squared by r minus 1. All right. What do we do here? Well, once again, um, you can, if you like, you can substitute the standard forms for r squared and r as they are in brackets and then expand, but it'll get pretty, pretty nasty when you have to multiply. So I would suggest first to just simply get rid of your brackets through expansion, so you get r cubed minus r squared. And then from here, it's just a basic uh, substitution based on your standard rules. Um, recall r cubed is n squared by n plus 1 squared all over 4. And r squared is n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 all over 6. And I think I'll do this one for you guys, okay? So let's just go ahead, find the LCM here and see what's happening. So 4 into 12 is 3. Right, and that's 3 by everything that's up here. 3n squared by, shall we just go ahead and expand this out? Uh, let's leave it and see if we can find factors before we do on the numerator. 6 into 12 is 2n plus 1 by 2n plus 1. The reason I said let's not expand this is we want to see if we could first of all factor out any terms that are like between these two here. And um, we can. You can see if you look at your 3n squared and 2n, we have a common um, n present, all right? And also we have n plus 1 here and n plus 1 here. So you can actually factor out n by n plus 1. And that will leave us with, we have our 3 and n, and we have n plus 1, all right? Let me minimize this just a bit. Shift it over here. All right, that's good. And continuing, we've had pulled out n, so we remain with 2. We pulled out n plus 1, so we remain with 2n plus 1. Now, if you had chosen to expand here, you'd get the same thing. Um, 
different approaches just tend to be quicker and shorter sometimes, right? So just keep that in mind. All right, n plus one, and in brackets, um, we'll get, uh, if you were to simplify that, I'll just tell you, you're supposed to get 3n squared minus n minus 2 all over 12. Now, you can leave your answer in this form if you like. You can go ahead and you can factor this out into 3n plus 2 by n minus 1 if you choose. Um, and you can leave your answer in terms like that. This is fine. I would say this is okay. Um, essentially, what we're looking for is to make sure you do have the ability to identify your standard forms of r cubed and r squared and that you do have that ability that those little algebra skills of being able to find the LCM and simplifying your little complicated um, expression there. So this is as simple as it, it's it's series finding the, um, the sum of a series, whether it be from one to five, whether it be from five to ten, or if it's the sum of the first n terms and you're given arbitrary values as in this case, it's pretty straightforward. It's just all about identifying those standard r squared, r cubed, if you're multiplying by a constant, and straight up algebra after that. There's no difficulty involved so much, I would say. Um, now, there are parts, there are parts of our series which tend to be a little more difficult for students, um, and that's uh, when you're using the method of differences. So let me just uh, highlight what the method of differences is all about. Let's go to the top here. Okay. And let's just get into this one. All right. So the method of differences. All right. So. Now, the method of differences um, is highly applicable whenever you have a case scenario of finding, for example, um, doing a simple one here, right? If you have the question, should have changed my color, that's okay. One over R by R plus one. Now, over here, you can tell if you were to I expand that denominator, you'll get r squared plus r. You have two identifiable forms that you can substitute. Um, you can find the LCM of, and you'll get a lovely denominator, and then you can flip. And that's one way you could have worked this question. Or what you could have done is uh, use the method of differences, which says that if you are able to split this, uh, why did I put an equal sign? <laughs> If you are able to split this uh, sequence into the difference of two sequences, then it's just a matter of substituting the first few values and the last few values, and you can actually get a standardized um, evaluation for the sum of the entire sequence or series, sorry. So first of all, how do I split this up into two? How do I split this up into two uh, separate series to see. Well, remember that thing called partial fractions? Yeah, you can use partial fractions here, right? So let's apply some partial fractions. So um, applying partial fractions in order to split this up, right? Because you're identifying that, hey, you can, and working with a denominator might not be the best. So I'm going to apply partial fractions. Um, applying partial fractions, this could be written in the form uh, A on R. Remember, it's not in terms of X, so you can't put A on X, right? Just be careful um, of that when you're dealing with partial fractions in a series. And this is also a linear non-repeated form, so the numerator will just simply be B on R plus 1. And going ahead... And cross multiplying, remember you cross multiply by that. So cross multiplying by R, R plus one. Let me just write that. Cross multiply across by R by R plus one will give us 
on the left hand side we get one is equal to a by r plus one plus b by r all right and two of the values we are definitely going to substitute r when <clears throat> when let's see when n when r has a value of zero what will we get here well let's see when r has a value of zero you will get a this goes to zero and also you can use when r has a value of negative one all right when r has a value of negative one on the left you still get this when r has a value of negative one this whole th um, part with a goes to zero and you get negative b so there we got the value of a and b so splitting this thing up into partial fractions gives us one on r uh, minus one on r plus one b was negative one here so I just wrote my minus sign. I changed this plus into a minus sign. Okay. So we have created a new way to rewrite our original question. Right. So our original question was to find the sum. All right. All right. Hold on. Our original question was to find the sum from R goes from one to N. Oh, my pen is just <laughs> sometimes. Okay, let's just erase this for a second. All right, and it's still doing it. It's probably tired. Let's give it a little break, shall we? Is it ready? Yes, it is. Okay. On, on point here. All right. So our original question was to find the sum of 1 over r by r plus 1, right? We could have expanded, but we didn't. We chose to split it up into partial fractions so that our question looks like this. Okay. Come on. Okay. Just a little. All right. Wow. There we go. <laughs> yes, my pen has been giving a bit of trouble. You guys probably realize that of late. All right, so method of differences is to be applied here when we can successfully simply write our series as a difference of two. Right, so we will apply something called the method of differences here. Now, how do we apply this method of differences? Very, very simple. First up, we're going to substitute when R would have a value of, uh, well, the first value is one. Let's see what happens with this uh, series here. When R is one, you're gonna get one over one, subtract, uh, 1 over 2. All right. When R has a value of 2, you're going to get 1 over 2, subtract uh, 1 over 3. When R has a value of 3, you're going to get uh, 1 over 3, subtract 1 over 4, and so on and so on. But remember that these values are values for a series. So they are essentially being added. So if I were to add up all these values, the first three values, see, um, essentially what you're going to get is one minus a half plus a half minus a third plus a third minus a quarter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can immediately tell that values cancel off each other. These two are going to cancel off. These two are going to cancel off. I bet your bottom dollar if I did R is four, you're going to get plus a quarter minus one fifth. So it seems like the central values keep canceling off. So does that mean the sum of this series is just one, the one that stands alone? Well, to prove that, we would have to continue completing the last uh, bit of um, values of this series at the end. So let's check what hap what's happening at the end of this series. Right now, at the end of the series, 
we have the last value being R being equal to N. Now, the value before that, just before that, would be R being equal to N minus 1. And then before this would be R being equal to N minus 2. So let's see what happens when we substitute those values into our differences or partial fractions that we created here. Well, I'll start with the last one. When n is, when r is n, you'll just simply get 1 over n plus 1. When you have n minus 1, you would get n minus 1 minus 1 over, be careful with this, this is n minus 1 plus 1. So we're just going to get n here. And this one, I should have written this a bit higher, but you're going to get n minus 2 there, right, minus 1 over n minus 2 plus 1 is simply n minus 1. So let's see what's happening here if we were to add these values, okay? So adding these values, you'll get 1 over n minus 2. Remember, there were values before this, okay? Plus, sorry, minus 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And this is your last term, so there's a full stop here. So you'll notice once again that it seems that essential terms just simply keep canceling each other off. Does this value remain here? No, because we have dots in between, which means the number or the term just before this one surely would have canceled that off as well. So it seems that the body or the center of this entire series when you are adding seems to disappear in such a manner where you just end up with the first and the last term. So the final sum for this question would be written like this. The sum from R going from 1 all the way down to N for the sequence that has a function after we split it up into partial fractions is one and the last one minus one over n plus one. That's what was left after we kept on substituting one and two and three and the last three values. We noticed that the final sum only gave us the first and last two being subtracted. And essentially, this is how the method of differences is applied. Um, you usually try to um, substitute the first three or four values and then the last three or four values just to observe how much is being cancelled off in the center. And then your remnants, um, the sum of your remnants will be your final answer for the sum of uh, the terms in this uh, series here. Right, so that's how you would apply the method of differences. It's nice. I do like it, but sometimes students always assume that your answer will just be the first term and the last term, and that's not always the case. You have to test. You have to test because sometimes in between here, alternating terms might remain. So sometimes if you see that happening, you have to probably test the last six terms just to make sure you can identify uh, exactly how many of the terms um, are remaining. You know, there are patterns using a method of differences. So just be careful when you're using this method. Um, take your time. And yeah, that's it. So guys, um, the last thing we have to do on series is just pretty much um, test for convergence and uh, divergence, right? Um, I think I'll send you guys some videos pretty much, um, but I will try to show you guys uh, the Lambert's ratio test, at least that one, um, pretty popular. All right, so I'll show you guys this one. Um, this is the test. I'm showing you guys this one because this one can test for if it's convergent, divergent, and it will also tell you sometimes if the better is not working, you'll have to use a different type of test, right? Um, so the test, for um, convergence or divergence or divergence using, uh, we're going to be using um, the Lamberts. <laughs> Sounds like a burger. 
you know, like a nice burger on a nice Saturday night, just go the road, nice hot pepper, no rain, nice weather. The Lambert's food cart. All right, so whenever you want to test that um, a particular series, for example, starting from n goes from zero all the way to infinity of your particular um, sequence, right? You're testing, you're using the Lambert's ratio test um, when you have a sequence going from zero all the way till infinity and you want to find out, will the sum of those values add up to an infinite divergent value or with, meaning that it will never um, come to a value. <laughs> That's what divergence means, right? It just keeps adding and adding and adding and getting bigger with no end. Um, or will it converge to a value? Right, so you use the Lambert's ratio test. And um, the ratio test just simply goes like this. One case can happen um, if, uh, if you find your limit, as n goes to infinity of, uh, it's called a ratio for a particular reason, you're gonna find two case scenarios. So once you are given a particular sequence, you would be finding the value for n plus one and dividing it by the value when n is just n. <laughs> and if that results in a value that's less than one, then it's said to be convergent a series converges, right? Um, part two is the exact opposite, obviously. If you are running a test and you limit as n goes to infinity of that very same thing happens to be greater than one, right? Then it's said to be divergent. Or it diverges. Should I put divergent? Okay, divergent. All right, and then finally, the last case scenario. Um, if the case happens where you do take the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio, right? And say it happens to be equal to dead set one, well then guess what you need to do? Use another test. <laughs> use another test, you can use the integral test, uh, there are actually a lot of tests you can use, you know. Um, but for now, let's just see how the Lambert ratio is applied. Um, let's look at one example, and we will call that a session. All right, so nice example here. All right, so let's just consider we have series, and guys, forgive me for simultaneously using the word series and sequence all the time. It's easy mistake to make. It's not legal to do, but do forgive me and understand sometimes when I say series, I mean sequence. If you're following my pen, you understand that it's just a slip of the word sometimes, right? All right, so we're considering uh, the sum of this sequence here. Yeah, now this is a sequence, that's not a slip of the word. This is your actual sequence. This is the function that defines your sequence, right? Because the summation sign is in front that tells us that this whole thing now is a series. The sum of a sequence is a series. So yeah, that's the difference here when you want to word it out. So we're finding the sum of this particular sequence from n going from one to infinity and they want to find out if it's converging or not. Right, so we're going to use um, by the Lambert's, we call them the A now, <laughs> Lambert's ratio test for now. Make sure you write the full word for exams, all right? Um, we're going to find the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n. All right, and let's see what happens. So first of all, um, well, u to the n is already given as is, um, and then, well, it implies that, let's just write it, uh, let's just write it here. u to the n plus one will simply be equal to, when n is n plus one, you're gonna get n plus one minus one. All right, so you're gonna just get two to the power of n all over three to the n plus one. 
Now let's find the ratio of this here. So this is my was my little working column. Let's find the ratio of this. Let's see what it works out to be equal to. So you're gonna get some nasty stuff. So you have to write the n plus one first. So we're gonna write two to the n all over three to the n plus one. And because this is a division sign, what I am going to do, seeing that we have two fractions to work with, is I am going to divide by the denominator. So essentially, I'm going to multiply by flipping it. So I'm going to like have 3 to the n all over 2 to the n minus 1, right? So performing some basic calculations here. Let's see what we'll end up with. All right. I'm going to end up with and goes to infinity of so on the numerator let's take the uh the two for for example this case is on top so we're going to use the two and we're going to have n subtracting the power of n minus one remember to put it in brackets because you're going to have a change of signs and on your denominator you're going to have uh three you could have had the three on top and um and you could have subtracted your n plus one you would have just probably you, you probably would end up with a power such as like three to the power of minus one so you would end up that three would end up going back all the way to the denominator so some of you who are wondering miss when do i know to leave the three on top and put the two on top or which one goes on top it doesn't matter once you perform your um your rules of algebra properly with exponents you'll be good to go so if you had your three on top and then your two on the bottom your powers would either be negative, showing you if you have to invert it or not. So no fear when it comes to um, which power goes where. Just use your rules correctly, right? And then you have your um, minus m. All right. So this just simply works out to be equal to n minus m, right? Cancels and then minus minus one gives us two on the numerator and down here, you have n minus n, you're left with 3 to the power of 1, right? And the modular sign is making sure that we have a positive value. So the limit of that is just simply equal to an actual number, right? And because it's equal to actual number, and that number happens to be, well, because it's equal to a number to begin with, it definitely has a converging or diverging value. And because this is definitely greater, right, than one, all right, it's set to converge. We have a convergent series here. Guys, and um, essentially, yeah, that's it. Um, your value is definitely a uh, positive right it's not negative so take care and goodbye